I just left my job. No, it wasn't in a rage with me storming out of the office with a box full of stuff. And no, I definitely wasn't fired or asked to resign for doing something completely scandalous. It just came to a point where it wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. But now I'm terrified. This probably sounds quite irresponsible. Not knowing what's next is a scary thing. We're taught that we should go to school and get a job. But the thing is, once we get there, we're likely to spend approximately 45 years of our life working. And what's really scary is that a large part of the world's population spend this valuable time trapped in jobs that they don't really care about or enjoy. Some of us are lucky enough to get a lot of satisfaction from the jobs that we currently do. And if you found that elusive work-life balance, you're one of a lucky few. However, if you're not currently finding yourself waking up excited on a Monday morning, pumped for the week ahead, you might want to consider if what you're currently doing for work is really what you wanted. As a little background, I started my journey of becoming an architect way back in 2009. It took a long eight years of studying and work experience to finally be able to call myself this. So it may come as a surprise that I've decided to leave something that I once called my dream job. To make things clear, I still love architecture. Back in the day as a student, I was filled with ambition to perhaps one day go out on my own and become the next big thing. However, after qualifying and finally accomplishing this goal, I started to realize that the likelihood of becoming fulfilled in this field whilst employed was really rather slim. And I started to ask myself questions like, what gave me my sense of purpose to begin with? It quickly dawned on me that there was a large portion of my job that I didn't enjoy. I love design, but I started to notice that I was only really doing things to help very privileged people augment or multiply their assets, which didn't really make me feel that good or fulfill any sense of my life's purpose. What I really wanted to be doing with my work was expressing my creativity in a way that might help the people who need it the most. While being employed, I soon realized that there was always a ceiling above me, limiting my progression and my responsibility. A lot of times there was always someone above me calling the shots, which often meant that there was nothing that I could do to make projects run more effectively or more efficiently. Perhaps with my comparatively small amount of experience, it would be naive of me to think that I could do a better job than those above me. But really, the lack of control began making me feel unsettled and I was itching to get more control and fulfillment back in my life, rather than just sacrificing my time for money and things that I didn't really care about. Although I was comfortable in my job, I began to realize that a huge part of why I was keeping this job was because of a sense of security. We need to work in order to provide ourselves with shelter, clothing, and food. But when you really think about it, job stability is really just a myth. You never know what's around the corner, so a company might go bankrupt, some new technology might take over your job, or your own circumstances might change very quickly. So the sense of security that employment gives you may not be as profitable as it seems when there's such a trade-off for what you really want to be doing. So although being an employee in a successful architecture firm wasn't the answer to what I wanted to be doing, I still didn't feel secure enough to do anything else and I really needed the money. So I did the only thing that seemed rational at the time and began to save. I didn't really know why I was saving as initially all I knew was that it made me feel more secure in case something did go wrong. But I ended up coming to the conclusion that the logical thing to do with that money was to invest it in an apartment in order to mitigate the cost of rent and hope that one day the mortgage would be paid off in full. Around the same time, my mum began to express her desire to renovate her house in a way that would allow my potential future family to live at home while she gets older. So as a side hustle, I poured everything into redesigning the house so that it would fit a growing family. I worked late almost every single day, we demolished walls, built a new bathroom, a new driveway and extended the house. All this additional work wasn't always pleasant at times, but it was all towards this idea of eventually being able to do what I really wanted with my life. This new arrangement would also give me the ability to rent out my apartment, and for the first time I realized that if things worked out, I may be able to get some of my life back to give me more time to do what I really wanted to. This is where things start to get a little crazy. While all of this was going on, the best possible thing ended up happening. I ended up meeting and eventually marrying my amazing wife, Nisha, and we decided to redesign the apartment in a way that we could both live in it together comfortably. 
and came up with the layout that many of you are familiar with from my minimalist micro apartment video. After doing this, I thought to myself, hmm, this layout could actually help some people as surely there are a bunch of people living in tiny spaces with the same challenges as us. So seeing as one of my passions other than architecture is photography, I decided to make a quick video and throw it up on YouTube to see how it might do. And somehow, out of nowhere, this video managed to get a mind-boggling 1 million views. After making several more videos just for fun, this has now brought me to a point where this is a viable career option, which still blows my mind, as I still feel like who would want to listen to me ramble in front of a camera week after week, and I feel like this is something that I shouldn't be able to do full time just because I enjoy it so much. This experience has caused me to realise that employment and society teaches us that you can never really do what you love because it's just not financially realistic. Instead, society tells us we should be cogs trapped in a world system that doesn't care for us one bit because of that financial incentive. The thing is, money will never buy you happiness or give you purpose, but we still chase it. There's literally somebody interested in everything, and anything that you can be interested in, you will find others who also are. So really, we have a unique opportunity to do whatever gives us our life purpose. It just means we need to be willing to work hard enough and take the risk if it means enough to us. I would never have known this unless I had first asked myself the question of what I really wanted to do and just gone for it. The thing is, the first step is often the most scary. There is so much about the unknown that cripples us with fear. However, there's something that I remember hearing a while back, which is, life shrinks and expands in direct proportion to your willingness to assume risk. Now looking back at my 20s, I've realised that every time I've followed the inner sense of life and peace within me and taken the risk towards the direction that matters to me the most, it's always proven to be the best thing that I could have done. Sure, I've made mistakes along the way and will probably continue to do so, but by following what really matters to us, it becomes the driving force towards the future that we really want. All of our individual situations are different, and we can never know how long finding fulfilment might take, as life is just unpredictable that way. But it seems illogical to me to complain about our circumstance and put no effort in to make a change. There is something about following our sense of purpose where our continuously small inputs and improvements eventually meet opportunities, which is the fabrication of our own quote quote luck in being able to do what we care about the most. Considering that we're likely to spend 45 years of our life working, it's probably worth doing everything within our power to make sure that we're doing something that we truly care about. Looking back, becoming an architect is one of the things that I'm most proud of, and although I'm now choosing to focus more of my time on YouTube, photo and video, it is this that has given me the biggest sense of peace, and is the one thing that I'm doing which is pushing me towards what I really want from my life, and giving me the time for my life's purpose. I guess I'm sharing this story in the hope that it will help one of you guys who might be going through a similar situation, as I know stories like this on YouTube really helped me on the path to where I am now. We're all wired differently, and what makes you happy might not be what makes someone else happy, and that's completely fine. But by really looking ourselves in the mirror and asking what matters to me the most, whether that's a career, our family, or our faith, we can begin to identify the things that hold us down and start to reduce their impact on our lives. Sometimes figuring out what truly makes us happy can take a little searching, and that's why I'm always happy to have my videos sponsored by online resources such as Skillshare. Although I'm an architect, I began finding that I had a passion for film and photography by learning things online, and now it's become a huge part of my daily life. When stumbling upon this journey of becoming an online content creator, I wished that I had some guidance before getting started. So if you're planning to, or have already started sharing your voice online, I'd highly recommend checking out a brand new course on Skillshare by the one and only Nathaniel Drew. In this course, he gives incredible advice towards starting out, including addressing insecurities and developing your core theme. I particularly found this helpful, as even though some may consider me a now successful YouTuber, I still very much struggle with these things on a daily basis. What's cool about Skillshare is that it's an online learning community that offers classes on an enormous array of topics, like design, business, cooking, baking, or even things like flower arrangement. To find out more, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership, where you can explore your creativity, learn new skills, and deepen existing passions. What's great about this is that it's completely free to try out, and if you decide that you love it, an annual subscription works out to be really affordable at less than $10 a month. 
What's more is sponsors like Skillshare allow people like Nathaniel and I to continue to do what we love. So not only may you learn something new, but you'll also be helping us as online content creators by signing up. Moving forward, I'm likely to still do some of my own architectural work on the side, much like what I did with our family home. But now, by being in control of my time, it's allowing me to put out more content for you guys on a more regular basis and take on more exciting projects of my own. I've always wanted to help people who need it the most and creating content online has been a great way for me to share my story and express my creativity. And hopefully it's bringing you guys a lot of value. I can truly say that I've never been any happier than I am right now. And I hope that somehow my story might be able to help in some way or other if you're currently finding yourself moving jobs, switching careers or going out on your own. I know being able to do what you love doesn't always work out straight away and I'm incredibly fortunate to be able to do what I do now and I have no one else to thank other than you guys. I know this probably sounds cliche but from the bottom of my heart I'm truly so grateful to each and every one of you. Your support on YouTube and Patreon makes this all possible and knowing that I'm providing even a tiny bit of help to one person's life makes it all worthwhile so thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comments below as I do read them and consider subscribing or sharing it with a friend. And if you feel like it, turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Once again, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.